Hello, happy internet people. It is me again, Brandon Hart, the Eco Struder. And, uh, well, it's probably no secret what this particular episode is about. Um, Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd, a few weeks ago put out a video and uh, where he did a visit to Siemens, their material sciences laboratory. I don't know, I'll have the correct MSL down, down uh, below here, but um, he came away with a pretty cool model that was designed. It's a Christmas model, so I know we're a little after Christmas at the moment, but uh, it was this model that had a Christmas tree inside of uh, what is basically like a Christmas tree ornament. Um, so kind of a cool idea. Christmas tree inside a Christmas tree ornament that normally hangs on a Christmas tree. So anyway, pretty cool. Um, it's well designed so that it could be printed in many different ways. Um, so I printed it many different ways. He, uh, he offered up the model and so I downloaded it and uh, decided first of all, let's just, you know, let's just cut straight to the chase. We gotta go big. So I printed a 700% version of it. Um, as you can probably tell, it had some problems. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, also recently got the uh, Reflow filament, which is a recycled PETG. Got a uh, review of that here as well, coming up shortly. Um, and uh, I printed it in the recycled PETG at 200% scale. And yeah, I think that worked out pretty well. And then lastly, I got the Kudo 3D Bean, which is a resin 3D printer. And so, you know, what am I gonna print? Well, <laughs> how about this cool model that Joel put out there? So um, there is the green resin version of the Siemens MSL uh, Christmas bobble as well. So a few different versions of them. Uh, all of those are cool. I'll do a lot more in-depth um, review and, and details on the resin printer, the bean. Um, just wanted to show off some of the models that I did here. Uh, but let's talk about this guy. Because really the main point of this video is not to show that I printed Joel's model. Although, hey Joel, I printed your model a few times. Um, but, uh, but some of the challenges involved in printing very large objects. So this was printed on the Modix 3D Big 60 3D printer. Um, it, it's, uh, it's got, uh, I think it's three perimeters, uh, about 10% infill, I have to remember. Um, it's printed with uh, a, a combination of color fab, PLA, and uh, 3D Fuel Workday, PLA. Um, which was part of the problem. But uh, yeah, at 700% scale, I did have, uh, I went through three different spools of filament in order to be able to get the whole thing done. Um, but uh, let's talk about the problems. So when you're printing big, one thing you have to understand is that you're going to use a lot of filament. So a standard one kilogram spool is not gonna suffice for most jobs. And this is no exception. This used a little over two kilograms to print this one model. And yes, that can get expensive. But uh, the biggest issue I had was that um, I used up the remainder of a 2.2 kilogram extra large spool from ColorFab. Um, and then I switched over to a, the remainder of a 3D Fuel Workday PLA spool. Uh, it went through that one and then I finished up with a brand new spool of 3D Fuel Workday PLA uh, for the top portion. And you can see it actually looks pretty good um, for most of the most of the print. I mean it, everything came out really really well. Um, it's big thick layers. I think these are uh, 0.6 millimeter layers, 600 micron layers. Um, so they're big chick, uh, th uh, thick chunky layers. But then something happens right about here. Um, and um, let me explain what did happen. So the Big 60 has a filament runout detector, um, a, a filament sensor, and everything runs through the filament sensor. So it, you know, it makes sure that there's always something there as the material is fed through. Um, and when the filament runs out, 
it automatically pauses the print. It does a really good job of doing that. It's really cool. Um, however, this particular spool of, of uh, Workday PLA from 3D Fuel, um, they did this really neat thing at the end here where they hooked the filament onto the spool. You can probably see where this is headed. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, imagine that this is all feeding through the filament detection sensor. It gets to that hook and it can't feed through. It stops, it stalls. Um, but since the detector is just detecting the presence of the filament, not necessarily the fact that it's being fed through the nozzle, it thought it was still feeding and actually did a really good job considering the fact that it wasn't actually feeding filament uh, very well at all. Um, and it kept trying to go, it kept trying to do the additional layers. And uh, you know, it was grinding away at the filament, um, trying to push it through in whatever way it could. It finally did pull all the way through, at which point it paused. Um, but unfortunately the damage was already done at that point. It wasn't going to come out right. It wasn't gonna look right. Uh, you could see the point at which the pause actually happened and then I put in new filament and it resumed. Uh, but even after it resumed, there are quite a few issues here with the print quality. It's uh, basically it under extruded for uh, sort of intermittently for the rest of the print. I, I think that was because there was plastic stuck in the uh, in the teeth in the in the hobs on the gear, um, and that meant that in certain places it wasn't pushing filament even when it thought it did. So it actually under extruded in certain places throughout the uh, the top of the print. So not only does it look bad, <clears throat> but uh, it also turns out that if you've got this line all the way around your print, and then your print falls over, <laughs> it, it's not very strong. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I sort of decapitated it uh, unintentionally. It actually fell off this table before I was filming. Um, so it was attached till just a few minutes ago, and then it broke. But, I don't know, maybe it's still cool for something. I don't know what I mean, I mean this is, so here's the thing. <clears throat> cool model to print, two, over two kilograms of material. Which seems a bit wasteful. Um, I do use a, uh, a PLA recycling service. Um, so this will actually be recycled into new material, but it's still, you know, two kilograms of material that, that I'm not really going to do anything with, uh, especially since it's all busted. Uh, it'd be cool to show off or something like that, but it's broken. So I probably won't be showing it off too much. So anyway, uh, I just thought I would discuss that real quick. Um, printing big is awesome. Printing big is fun but printing big costs a lot of money. Um, when the failure happens, you, know, you can imagine this thing was, so this took, um, I think it was right around three days to print uh, in its entirety. So we got about here and that was about two and a half days in. And so, you know, if I had killed it right then, we'd already have had about two kilograms of wasted material. Um, so it gets expensive. It also, if you have a failure at any point, especially after days of printing, means you scrap the whole thing and you start over. That's awful. Um, so yeah, just certain things to think about. You know, a lot of people think that printing big is the same thing as printing small. It's just bigger, um, which isn't entirely true. Unfortunately, printing big involves a lot more risk, involves a lot more money, involves a lot more time. Um, and, um, and, and can be a bit of a challenge. So if you ever are uh, getting a quote for a 3D print, I'm being selfish here on this part, but uh, if you ever get a quote for a 3D print and you want a big print and it comes out to be extremely expensive and you're surprised about that, don't be surprised because there's a lot that goes into it. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, I just wanted to kind of talk about this real quick, show the models that I printed that Joel provided uh, and talk about printing large. 
Um, actually, funny thing is, uh, Joel had a similar issue when he was printing his 700% version of this model. Um, his, extrude, his filament ran out, I think, a little bit closer to the top uh, than mine did. Mine was able to, you know, detect the filament run out um, and allow me to switch. But if it gets caught up, it doesn't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is Brandon Hart, the EcoStruder. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, follow on social media. Um, and uh, until next time, I'll see you next time. <laughs>